What's going on guys, my name is Yellow S2K and welcome to Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game six. This is an early look at the game. I believe it comes out March 9th. All the gameplay here, just keep in mind, it's a work in progress. They're improving things like the AI, lighting, shadows, and a variety of other things. So take it for what it is, but I'm excited to uh, bring you guys a, a first look here uh, for those of you guys that are still hanging around and watching my channel that's been uh, kind of dead and, and overlooked for, for a while. So um, thank you for, for checking out this video. I'm gonna dive right into some of the riding on a factory 450 so you can see what that's like. I think that's what people care about the most. Then I'll show you some of the other additional features and some of the cool things they're adding into this uh, iteration of the game. So. We're gonna hop into, uh, I guess we'll just do St. Louis. We'll keep it as Malcolm Stewart as far as riding aids, exactly what you would expect. Um, I basically have everything, you know, advanced physics, manual or off for everything, pretty standard. Race options, we have them on realistic, event type standard. Again, you can tailor this to whatever you want. Basically, we're just gonna hop straight into a race to show you the physics, show you what people wanna see first. I can give you guys my thoughts on it. I have played the game for a few hours and I have some opinions on it, both good and bad. I'm curious to see what you guys think from this initial gameplay. Again, keep in mind, it's a work in progress and uh, there's a lot that will be changing. So, um, who cares about bike setup? Let's just hop right in here. You can hear Daniel Blair talking in the background. I know it's probably pretty quiet. Uh, Ricky Carmichael as well, and then in the career, through some of the tips and tricks, it's all Jeremy McGrath, which is really cool to have him a part of this this year as well. So, I was kind of sleeping on the gate, but let's see if we can get a halfway decent start. Again, they're going to be improving the AI. The one thing I have to say is the AI, when you hit them, it's like hitting just a brick wall. I wish uh, there was a little bit more feel or like if you hit them, it kind of moved them a little bit and just a little bit more leeway there instead of it just being just literally hitting a brick wall. So um, again, a small thing and maybe that's something they're already planning on changing. Sorry, AC, I want to get out front because I want to show you guys the physics more than the AI. See if I can try to stay out front. I don't know, on realistic, again, I'm getting used to this game as you can imagine it being uh, so new. So, first thoughts. When I first started playing this, I was actually disappointed. Um, the game felt very slow paced to me, uh, to the point that it was almost boring. And I know that's a very harsh way to start this off, but I think I'm very used to, or even, that was dumb, that was my fault. <laughs> uh, but I think I actually prefer a faster paced motocross game. Um, and, and these games have always been a little bit slower paced. Um, and kind of what I mean by that is I, I don't get the thrill from just the overall speed. You don't feel like you're just hauling. It's more about just trying to be accurate and get through rhythms and things like that. So again, I have, uh, I have my own opinions on it, but the more that I play it, the more that I actually enjoy it and really understand what they're trying to go for. And it, you have to be patient. Um, and that's something that I guess I'm just not used to with some of the other games like MX Bikes or MX Simulator or MX Race ATV Legends. Uh, I think those are the, the real top games that are out there right now. And it's it just feels slow. It, it almost feels boring in that way. But then as you start playing a little bit more, you start to really enjoy trying to get through rhythms cleanly and that's where your speed comes from. Even just that rhythm, it's like the the pacing, the, f the feeling from the game just improves uh, as you get more comfortable. At the beginning, especially on the 250 that's uh, unmodified, you know, a stock 250, it's a little rough, I have to admit. It's a little rough, but um, that's just kind of the way it goes, and, and you want to have that very distinct difference in a feeling of a you know stock 250 versus a factory 450. So it just is what it is, and it's just kind of the styling of the game. But if I dig a little bit deeper into the physics instead of just complaining about pace, um, I think the one thing that I really think is maybe going backwards on this game is corner entry. Um, there's just a lot of understeer. You've always had to break early into corners on this game, but look at the sliding, like right there, just slide, slide, slide. It doesn't feel like a nice pointy dirt bike, right? Um, 
it, it just feels a little bit sloppy. It feels like it just wants to understeer, it wants to push, instead of just really bite from the front end and uh, maybe even just steer it with the rear end. You really can't do that. I mean, that's second gear pinned in a corner, turning as hard as I possibly could there. And you really just kind of push wide and things like that. Look at all the sliding into that corner. Again, these are all things that you can counteract, but the way you have to ride slows things down even more so. So the way you really have to ride in this game, at least in my initial impressions, is you need to brake early and not lose traction, kind of like I did there. Just brake early, get the bike nice and rotated, and don't override it. Um, and when you start doing that, it becomes a whole lot more fun. Like trying to stay straight there, get the power down, don't push too hard. I actually never tried to hit that line that way. Um, but if you override and, and just go too quick into the entry of corners, you just push um, and you slide all over the place. Your front end has no grip, so you really have to just be patient. Even here, so I'll go... I was trying to get the back end to come out. Again, turning as hard as I can, full throttle second gear, and let's be honest, in a 450 if you're doing that, I know it's a banked corner, I know it's a bull turn, but oh, that was dumb, completely on accident. Um, your, your back end's gonna come out, or at least you'll have the option to do that. I do have my brake brakes separated, so uh, my rear brake, I'll show you into this corner here. Locked up the rear brakes that whole way, the back end still did not come out, even with my rear brake completely locked. I'll do it right here as well. A little bit better there because of just the nature of kind of coming off that bump and whatnot. I'll show you here as well. Full lock up, and you don't really rotate till the very last second. So I'd like to see you be able to rotate the bike a little bit more, steer with that rear end in corners a little bit more. Um, I, I don't know, maybe it's just personal preference. Let me know what you guys think. Again, the pacing and, and that is probably my biggest thing. Otherwise, the whips, pretty much the same thing. The scrubs, nothing to write home about. Um, I know a lot of people like to say, oh, they've freed it up, this or that. Nah, I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's just stiff and it's canned whips. It's obviously not something that um, they've really tried to attack yet and, and maybe they haven't had the time or the resources and it just doesn't make sense for them to prioritize that over just trying to get the game out uh, each year. So it, it just makes sense. Uh, it's kind of, I think, what we all expect from these games at this point. But, yeah, in-air physics, pretty much the same. Ground physics, a little bit too much understeer. The pacing is a little slow, but as you start trying to pick through some of these tracks, you can see um, there's a lot of fun to be had in trying to master these. Uh, again, I am very rusty uh, after not playing the last game. But at the same time, I could see myself having some really good multiplayer races, and I think that's where this game's going to shine. I think you're going to be able to really have some fun races because it's going to be about getting through the rhythms cleanly, accurately, keeping your speed up and not having any cases. And because of the slow pacing and the, I guess, the easiness of the game as far as crashes, even though I just crashed, um, it's, it's always been great for multiplayer racing and sometimes AI racing as well. I think that's one of the strengths of these games because it's it's not as brutal or as harsh as some of the simulators, MX Sim, MX Bikes in particular. So uh, you're able to have some closer racing overall. Again, that's my initial impressions of the physics of the game. Um, there are some positives, right? You can have some great racing. Um, picking through the rhythms can be a lot of fun because you do have to be accurate and you can kind of learn how to go faster and faster. We all know that there is a skill gap and because there's guys that go so fast in these games. And I think this game will be no exception. But that's, uh, again, kind of the initial impressions from my, from my view of the physics. Let me know what you think. From here on out, we're going to dive into some of the other uh, awesome features that they've added. And we'll go from there. All right, one of the cool features they've added is the Supercross Academy. This is honestly just tutorials to walk you through the game. Um, there's introductory lesson, lessons, there's advanced lessons, and then theory lessons is really just videos that tell you what a triple crown is and things like that. So um, again, it's really cool. It's actually Jeremy McGrath that walks you through these. Let's go to whoops here. When dealing with whoops, knowing how to balance the weight of the rider is key. Tilt the right stick down and shift the weight onto the back wheel and go through this section at full speed. So pretty standard, of course. 
But again, a pretty cool thing, especially for new players to be able to hop into here and have an actual tutorial to go through to learn how the game wants you to do some of these things. And again, pretty cool to have Jeremy McGrath join the team of Daniel Blair and Ricky Carmichael um, in some of the commentary and, and whatnot in this game. Looks like we've got a whoop section right here. Pretty straightforward, hit a section as fast as you can, and that's that. So again, nothing too special, but pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to see them improve some of the videos beforehand. I know the one for the whips, the whips that they showed in the little, like, this is what you should do. They were just the most disgusting whips ever. Um, and I'm sure, again, work in progress, that's something that they're working on. So again, there's advanced lessons, and this is something you can progress through. So. All right, as far as the career goes, we'll start a new career. I don't care about overriding anything. The cool stuff is that you have Futures, Rookie, and Pro that you'll progress through. Again, there's only the three races in the Futures, then you'll jump into Rookie, and then it's a full proper season there, and then you'll get into the, to the Pro ranks. It's uh, pretty similar to how it's been done before, where you can sign with a team, and then you have to use their graphics and their setup if you, like, muck off... Um, if you sign with them, then you're going to use their bike and you can't customize it. Or you can actually just sign with a sponsor and at that point you can uh, customize your bike. You just have to have that sponsored logo on your bike, that kind of thing. So you do have the options to do that. Um, other things that are pretty interesting here is the skill tree. I would say that you have uh, a lot of options to improve your rider and choose how you want them to improve and, and how that you want them to feel. Cool to be able to prioritize that through a skill tree. So you have turn control, banking management, control in air, ground control, control when, when landing, braking power, braking skill, scrub control, movement speed, and this constitution, which is uh, physical resistance. So um, trying to reduce the skill pe penalty during an injury. So it's cool that that is another aspect that you can get injured and you have to try to make yourself a little bit more resilient. So pretty cool that that's uh, an option in the skill tree, I think will be a fun thing to give you uh, a reason to continue to grind through the career. So I actually look forward to doing that. Uh, the journal here shows, and it's a way for you to unlock some of those skill points, but it shows a lot of really fun stats. So you can look at what's been completed, you can even filter to what all you've completed so you can track that. Again, relatively simple, but a pretty cool setup. As far as your options for the career, it's always nice to have the one shot short if you want, or you can go hardcore and you can go the real thing. So you have the last chance, or sorry, you have heats, the last chance qualifier, mains, all at full length. Um, and then you can obviously control that length here as well. So you can go realistic and do the, the full thing where on 450s you're doing 20 minute plus one laps, um, the, the whole shebang. And then of course your AI difficulty, pretty standard there. Another fun thing to look at, uh, as you would expect, this game has some just really great customization. It's one thing that Milestone just does such a great job in all of their games. Um, obviously, you can pick all of the different bikes that you would like. It's great to have 125s in here. It's cool to see some of the 125s. I might have to build out a cool 125. That's a good idea. Um, but yeah. Pick your bike, and then from there, say we have this Yamaha components. I like the UI here. It's pretty easy to work through. It's not the prettiest, but it works really well. So, right, you want to pick your bars at the top. You can hit your bumpers to select whatever brand. Say we want to go to Pro Taper. You can pick uh, these blue Pro Tapers if you want and just select through. And it's that same way. For all of the different parts, say you want to throw an exhaust on there, we want to move over to FMF and go blue carbon because it's a Yamaha, and boom. Uh, they just do such a great job. There's tons and tons of options for all of these different parts, and I do like the, the way they've situated this. Again, not pretty, but you can see it all very clearly. What you're doing, it highlights the part that you're going to work on or you're going to change. 
boom, you want to go, let's go factory connection suspension or say you want to throw some race, race tech suspension on there. All just very easy to work with. Same thing with the colors. It highlights the part that you want to change. And a really cool feature is that you can actually save colors. So you can see here, I've actually created a gold that I like for chain or other components, right? Um, so you can select whatever color you want. Say you want a bright or maybe a darker green. You can change the brightness, whatever. We'll do something crazy for that chain. And then you can come right here and you can click X, save color. And then you can add that to any of your bikes um, and have that color saved, which is pretty cool. Um, I really like it. And then you can overwrite that color. It's just very well thought out. I think they did a really great job with that. So otherwise it's the same thing with um, your gear, same setup, search helmets. Now, one of the cool things here is you can actually customize and create your own liveries if you want to say that for for helmets and then it looks like you're going to be able to download helmets that people have created as well all right i actually had to find it you edit the helmets here off of the main menu go into customize and then helmet editor new helmet you can change the base color to whatever you want there's our ridiculous gold pretty cool you can go to um, your sticker material, do you want it to be glossy, do you want it to be opaque, which is kind of cool to have that option. Um, we'll do that. Add layer, spherical. I'll have to play with this a little bit, but obviously you can pick all different kinds of stickers, letters. I'm sure there's a lot of ways you can create some pretty cool stuff, and I'm excited to see what people do with this. It's not something that, honestly, I'm going to dive deep into, especially for a video like this, but it's more about showing you guys the options. And you can tell with all the different shapes they're giving you, and um, I bet you people are going to create some really cool replicas and some and pretty great helmets with this. I'm excited to see what happens with this and how deep people go. But, again, pretty cool to see that, as well as sticker editor. So you can go, let's see, let's see what this looks like. So you can just create a sticker by itself and then be able to apply that to bikes and things like that. So again, this is something I'll have to explore a little bit further, but it's great for you guys to see that this is something new and I think something that could be honestly something to get very, very excited about creating your own stickers and then um, having them here and sharing them and then community stickers. So people are going to create some awesome stuff. I don't know what that was. One, two, three and be able to uh, download that and then use it on your bike. So I'm excited to see some replica content come to this game uh, without having to worry about any licensing and things like that, hopefully. So um, anyway, I think that's the main stuff to show you. It's not worth going deeper into the career and showing you the gameplay. The 250s are a little slow to begin with, and then you uh, slowly upgrade it and you sign with different teams. The usual deal, you get out of futures, that's pretty easy to do. Three races, and then you just go up through your championship. Make money, buy parts, improve your bike, and eventually, hopefully, become a 450 Supercross champion. One quick note, in the free ride area, also known as the Supercross Park, you have an area kind of at the top of a hill that you can ride up to where you have a couple options. You can go to the green sticker, which is McGrath's Trainings, or you can go to the Supercross Academy. So it's all accessible through that free ride area. Um, and the one cool thing about that is you also have a red sticker that is trainings that you do to improve your rider's physical condition. So again, working on that condition and that's related to the injuries and then getting skill points and building up your rider to be a little bit more resilient. Again, another interesting feature to build out that career into a more immersive experience. Last thing I wanna share with you guys is some of the new features from this game compared to Supercross 5. Just to read through a quick list, a career that focuses on immersion to provide a deeper experience thanks to guidance of Coach McGrath. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you have a new head-to-head -head game mode, which is Rhythm Attack. It looks to be straight rhythm, which is awesome. That could be a ton of fun. I, I'm really excited to see that feature be added. Um, let's see, full bike setup. So pretty standard, but 
they're saying that that's new in this compared to Supercross 5, so some deeper setup options. That's pretty cool. Um, the Supercross Park, that's, you know, you have multiple Supercross tracks, multiple motocross tracks, big free ride area to play on. Um, let's see. We have cross play, which is another exciting thing. Play with everyone on every system. And then there's going to be some online ranking. These are the things that are most interesting to me. Uh, attain levels and see your position in the ladder. So an actual online ranking system, something that could be really, really cool. So just some other additional features. Again, keep in mind what you saw today was a work in progress. Let me know if you guys want to see something else. I might have some content laying around that I can work with and maybe share with you guys. But thank you guys for watching. Look out for the new... Supercross 6 on March 9th, I hope. <laughs> I'll correct that here if, uh, if I'm wrong, but it's coming and please provide feedback. What would you like to see different? Maybe the devs can see some of that uh, in the comments and maybe make some adjustments and we can try to make this the best game that we possibly can. Thanks for giving me a quick or early look here. Uh, the guys at Milestone, even though I haven't been posting, I really appreciate it. Um, they're a really great group of guys. And uh, it's nice to share my thoughts, both good and bad, on the game. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Peace.